Hello guys, it's Eugene here and I am super excited to be back with an amazing fully funded scholarship opportunity in Germany. So today we are going to be talking about the fully funded DAD EPOS scholarship. This is the fully funded scholarship where you don't have to pay any form of tuition fee. You also get a monthly stipend of about 934 euro if you are going for masters and 1300 euro if you are going for a PhD. This scholarship also covers your health insurance. You can also get a rent subsidy and also your flight ticket to Germany is covered. So you do not need to bother about any financial stress. To make it more interesting, you can come to Germany with your family if you get this scholarship. And also your accompanying family member gets a monthly stipend from this scholarship. I think that is quite generous. There's a whole lot of other benefits when you get this scholarship and we're going to take a look at that in the video. It is interesting to let you know that I am an alumni of this particular scholarship. I got a DAD EPS scholarship back in 2020 and I did my masters in Germany with this scholarship. So I have a lot of tips for you to help you win this scholarship and all the information you're going to need to apply to this scholarship you are going to get in this video. This is a one-stop video when it comes to the DAD EPS scholarship. So make sure to watch right through to the end because I'm going to be giving out tips and every information you need to know about this scholarship. At this time, I will urge you to hit the like button. Also subscribe if you are not a subscriber because this is the homeland of international opportunities. There are a whole lot of opportunities that will be coming your way in the coming weeks. Also do not forget to get my scholarship ebook with the fourth link in the description box. This ebook contains a lot of award-winning letters of motivation from scholars who have won scholarships including the DAD EPS scholarship. So with this, you can get a lot of inspiration to craft out an award-winning letter of motivation for your scholarship application. So do it to get the ebook with the first link in the description box. And I think that will be your first step towards winning a fully funded scholarship. Let's get right into the video. Okay guys, let's get right into it. We are here at opnestniger.com. This is your number one scholarship website. Make sure to check it out every day for fully funded scholarships worldwide. We are taking a look at the fully funded DAD EPS scholarship. This is a master's scholarship as well as some few PhD scholarships also available. In this video, I am going to take you through the eligibility criteria, the eligible courses, eligible countries, as well as the documents you need for this scholarship. And then we are going to take a look at how to apply to this scholarship. And also at the end of this video, I'm going to give you useful tips that will help you succeed and win this fully funded scholarship for your master's program in Germany. So make sure to stick with me and watch right to the end so that you don't miss the important tips. First things first, let's quickly brush through the scholarship benefits. So you can see right here, depending on the academic level, the monthly payment for your scholarship is 934 euro. That is for graduates and then you get 1,300 euro for doctoral candidates. Your health insurance is also covered. You also get travel allowance and under certain circumstances, if you are eligible, you can also get monthly rent subsidy. And if you are coming with your family, like your spouse or children, they are also going to get monthly allowance. What is the scholarship duration? Depending on your program, the scholarship can either be from 12 to 42 months. So if you are doing a master's, mo most master's in Germany is usually two years. That is 24 months. So just some few master's programs are one year. And then if you are doing a PhD, then you can have up to 42 months. Before we take a look at the eligibility criteria so that you can tell if this is for you or not, let's take a look at the academic fields of study that are eligible for the scholarship. So if you find your field here, then it means that you might just be eligible to apply to this scholarship. So we have economics, business and administration, political economics. So there are courses that fall under this area. And also there are development um, cooperation courses. And there are also engineering and related science courses, regional and urban planning. And we have agricultural and forestry sciences. There's all, there are also courses under natural and environmental sciences. There are courses relating to medicine and public health. And there are courses relating to social science, education and law, as well as media studies. Better still, you can come down on this website and you can see a list of all postgraduate courses with application deadlines. Right now, I am going to click on 
this link right here so that we can see the courses that are eligible. So it takes us to this PDF file where we can see all the courses that are eligible. So right here, you can see development related postgraduate courses. So if you come down right here, you can see all the courses. If you come to the right hand side, you can see the name of the university or institution and then the language of instruction. You have to take note of that. Um, some of the courses might be in JAMA, just a few of them. And then you can see the degree that is going to be awarded after you complete the course. And then you can see the duration without um, JAMA language for this particular program. Some of them are 24 months, that is two years. And some of them can be um, just 12 months. And very important, if since we are looking at the DAD EPS scholarship, this is the particular deadline. So you can see um, application deadlines for intake 2025-2026. And um, this is divided into two columns. We have the DART scholarship and then we have self financing. So the, the, the DART scholarship deadline is what we are interested in. This means that you have to apply to the program by this deadline if you want to be considered for the DART scholarship. So you can see the deadlines right here. So we have a deadline in August right here. And we have another deadline in October. This tells you that the different courses have different deadlines. So depending on whatever course you are interested in, make sure to apply before the deadline. Right here, you can see that there is a range for this particular uh, program. So it means that the application starts 1st of uh, October and ends 15th of November. So um, for other courses, you might want to go into the website for that particular course to know when application starts. But what you really need to take note of is the deadline. So most times application starts around August or in September or even in July. So just make sure you submit your application before the deadline. I think you have a lot of time to prepare all the documents and submit your application. So I'm gonna show you the documents just in a moment, but right now you can see the list of the courses, we're just going to come to the um, left hand side and you can see the different courses under different academic fields. So, for example, under economic science, business administration and political economics, we have some master's programs right here. We have master's of development economics. We have master's program in international uh, development economics. So these are different courses. What you need to do is click on the course there's a link on the course you just have to click on the course when we come to how to apply to the dad eps program i'm going to teach you how to apply so but for now just note that there's a link on the course where you can click on and read more about the program and how to apply i'm just going to take it down so that you see the different courses under development cooperation we have development management geography of environmental risk and human security so these are other courses you can see right here there's a phd course right here and we have engineering and related sciences. There's um, hydro science and engineering. So these are different courses under engineering and related sciences. So just take a look at them and see if you are interested in any of the course. So there's also sustainable renewable energy um, technologies. Uh, we have air quality control, solid waste and wastewater processing engineering. So you just look at the courses, then under regional and Uber planning, there's Uber management and another course right here. There's also the Masters of Science, um, Integrated Urbanism and Sustainable Design. And under agriculture and forest sciences, we have tropical forestry. Take a look at all these other courses right here, sustainable food systems, agricultural economics. And then under natural and environmental sciences, we have masters in marine biology. So this is the particular program I did during my time. And also we have the tropical hydrology and uh, environmental engineering, environmental governance, landscape ecology and nature conservation, natural resource management and development, integrated water resource management, renewable energy management. Just take a look at this. There are a lot of courses right here. So under medicine and public health, we have masters of science in international health. And we have masters of science in global urban health we also have masters of science in international health and uh, we have global health and also a phd in medical research quite interesting and um, under social science education and law we have vocational education and personnel um, capacity building international education management masters of law in intellectual property and competitive law quite interesting 
and finally under media studies we have international media studies so these are master's programs and some few phd programs that you can look into so you can see the language of instruction and everything like i have explained as uh, well and also the the deadlines quite important you have to take note of that so guys i hope you find the course and we we are back at openestnaja.com and right now we're going to take a look at the prerequisites as well as the requirements so this is basically the eligibility criteria so for you to be eligible you have to be working in uh you have to be working for a public authority or a state or a private company in a developing country that is involved so in a moment we're going to take a look at the um we're going to take a look at the countries that are eligible for the scholarship and also you need to hold a, uh, a bachelor's degree if you are applying for a master's program and then you need to hold um, a master's degree if you are applying for a phd in a related subject and also you have completed your academic degree far above average in your results so you have to be in the upper third in your class or in your um, in your academic uh, um, achievements you have to have a good result far above average and also you can prove at least two years of related professional experience after completing your bachelor's degree and also your academic degree is no more than six years old so it means that from the time you finished your program um, it is not more than six years from the time you are applying for the scholarship and lastly, you have to come from um, one of the eligible countries. So there's a link right here still at openestnaja.com and you can click on this list right here, list of eligible countries. Let's take a look at it. And that takes you to this page where you can see the list of eligible countries. So you can see the countries right here. A lot of African countries are, uh, are eligible. Nigeria is there and also Ghana, Botswana, Ethiopia. So um, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and just move it through quickly and see if you can find your country right there. Hopefully, your country is on this list and um, you can also take a look at it properly on the website. You can click on it and look for your country. So let me know in the comment section. Comment if you can find your country. Just write the name of your country on the, on the comment section and where you are watching from so I can tell if... Your country is, is there and also let me know if you are going to apply to this scholarship right now let's take a look at the application documents what documents do you need to apply to the dad eps scholarship and after this we're going to take a look at how to apply to the scholarship i'm going to give you all the tips that you need to know and how you can submit a successful application so if you've gotten any value so far, do not forget to hit the like button. This is very um, helpful because it helps our channel to, to grow. Okay, guys, the first thing you're going to need is the DAD form. So there's the DAD application form. I've also made a video on how to fill the DAD application form. And um, in the course of this video, I'm going to show you where to download the, the, the um, DAD application form. It's on the DAD website. And we are going to take a look at the official website in a moment. And, I'm, and there I'm going to show you how to download this form. And um, what you also need. So for the documents, you need a completed um, and signed checklist. This is also another document I'm going to show you where to download. And the like I already said, the DAD application form. And then you need um, a CV. And this is a tip right here. Your CV should be in a reverse chronological order without any unexplained gaps so your cv should be in the euro pass format this is bas this basically means that your your cv should be in the tabular form i will try to put um it's a, a euro pass cv template in my whatsapp um, channel so you can make sure to check out my whatsapp channel the link is in the description box i'm going to try to put a euro pass cv format that you can easily edit and work with in my whatsapp channel and also as stated here make sure to explain every gap in your cv like timeline what you did from a particular year range to another year range make sure you don't have a gap where you don't put any form of education or um, work experience so that is very important also you need one um, letter of motivation with detailed reference to academic and professional as well as personal reasons for applying to the program it is important to note that for the DAD EPS scholarship, you can apply to a maximum of three programs 
and while you are doing this you can only use one letter of motivation and in your letter of motivation you have to state that why you uh, you have to state the reason why you are applying to these three different courses and um, you just have to use one letter of motivation you can't use three letters of motivation you also need a letter of recommendation from your current employer so this letter should include an official letterhead uh, and also signature as well as uh, official stamp and must be of current dates you also need a certificate or certificates of employment from the employers um, showing at least two years of work experience this means that if you have worked in um, two or more places or uh, then you need to show you have to get certificate of employment from these different employers and everything should add up to give you two years of work experience after your program after your bachelor's program that is post study work experience they have also stated here that the certificate of employment from your current employer should if possible include a guarantee of re-employment after returning to your home country another document you need to provide is proof of language skills and this is this depends on the course you're applying to if you are going for a course that is taught in german you have to show proof of german uh, proficiency if you are going for a course that is taught in english then you have to show proof of english proficiency especially if you are not coming from an english-speaking country and also if your first degree was not in english however the proof of language skills depend on the course and the university you are applying to some universities will allow you to prove your english by a letter of attestation from your previous university stating that your course was in english um, some other universities or courses would require you to show standardized tests like is or tofu so um, it depends on your course and um, you can also communicate with the university to know if you can apply without any form of english um, language proficiency standardized test you also need to include copies of your higher education degree certificates including a certified copy so you have to certify your um, documents and you can do this by taking them to a court um, and you can do this by taking them to a court of law and let them know that you want to certify the documents you make a photocopy of your original documents and get them stamped in a court of law so that is how to basically certify your document it's also it it is also known as attestation so you can get your document um, certified in the court of law you also need a copy of your transcript of record including an explanation of the grading system and this also needs to be certified so if you come down on this website opennetnager.com you can also see proof of current or previous employment so you can get some tips on how to go about this and also letter of motivation you can get some tips on how to go about your letter of motivation and also um, i already talked about this if you're applying to uh, multiple courses you need to use one letter of motivation as you can see right here the applicant is only allowed to submit one letter of motivation describing their motivation for all selected study courses the letter of motivation must include an order of priority of the courses chosen and an explanation of why the courses were chosen in that order of priority this means that you need to have a first choice a second choice and a third choice depending if you are taking three courses or two courses you just need to have first choice and second choice and you have to state why you have chosen that uh, course to be your first choice and the second choice to be your second choice this can be quite tricky uh, most times i encourage people to put their effort to apply to just one course especially if the courses are not related um, or they are not very very related so if the courses are, are very related then you can um, use one letter of motivation because one letter of motivation can fit into these related courses maybe they are related courses and just in different universities so that would be good but if the courses are not quite related this can become tricky because you are not able to concentrate on just one course as you are dividing your motivation to two different courses so if possible choose and target a particular course and write a very good letter of motivation for that particular course okay guys right now let's talk about how to apply to this scholarship so it is very simple it is one of the the most straightforward application for any form of fully funded scholarship because in this case you just need to submit all the documents we have stated above 
to the university. So that is all. Just submit the, the, the documents to the program, to the course, or to the university, and you are good to go. So it is quite straightforward. You do not need to submit any document to the DAAD at this point, but to the university alone in the first instance. So just submit all your documents to the university and you are good to go. So let's take a look at this. Let's go into the official website. I'm going to click on this link right here. This takes me to the official DAAD EPUS website. And right here, you can see an overview. You can see the application requirements and application procedure right here. So you can take a look at everything, the objective, who can apply. So everything is also stated at right here. And if you come down, you can see the that EPUS broker. So I encourage everyone to go through the broker. And you can click on this to download the broker and also take a look at the frequently asked questions as that can help you to understand the scholarship better. If you click on the application requirement, it is going to ask you to select your country. So I'm going to select my country right here. I'm just going to type in Nigeria. And then um, it's going to ask you to select your status, which is just graduate. And once you have done that, you can click on show application requirements. So if you click on that, it's going to show you the requirements right here. You can read through, and I think it is quite similar to all the countries eligible. After you're done reading through, you want to click on application procedure. So if we click on the application procedure, you can see some details right here, application deadline. So this depends on the course that you have chosen. So if you come down, you can see the application documents right here. And this is where you can download the checklist as well as the DAD application form. So you can see right here, checklist. if you click on this checklist, I'm going to click on it. It's going to open into um, a new tab and you can see the checklist right here. So you just have to tick these boxes um, if you have included the documents um, on, the, on the left in your application. So that is how to go about this. You just have to tick the box and you are good to go. You can print it out and tick and then you can scan it back and add it to your application documents. So this will help you to uh, make sure that you have included all the necessary documents in your application. So back here at the DAD website, you can also see the DAD application form, which is another important document. So I'm gonna click on it as well, and you can download this form and fill it out, or better still fill it um, in your computer before downloading it, and you can then sign it by hand because you have to sign the form by hand. And um, I've also made a video in the past. Uh, I'm gonna put the video in the YouTube video description as well, so that you can check out how to fill the DAD application form. That will guide you a lot, so that you don't make any mistake while filling out the DAD application form. Another document you need right here is your CV. And you can see, please use the Europass um, template. So there's a template right here in the Europass format. So I'm gonna click on that and let's see how to create your CV with the Europass template from the Europass website. So this takes you to the Europass website. And what you wanna do is come down a little bit and right here you can see create your Europass CV. I'm gonna click on that. It takes us to this page and right here you can choose how you want to start. So you can start from your profile if you have a Europass profile. You can select a document from your uh, library. So if you want to just convert your previous CV to Europass format, you can do that. Or you can also import a Europass CV. And um, the, the last option right here is to create a new CV. So I'm gonna click on this option, create new CV. And um, once you click on that, it's gonna take you to this uh, page where you can start filling out the, the details of your CV. And once you are done with this, you can click on next. So the first part is your personal information and everything you need to fill out. Once you fill out everything, you can click on next. You can also save your progress. And once you are done, you can download your CV in the Europass format. So you can see the steps. You, you edit and then you select a template and then you save your um, CV. In this way, you can easily create your Europass um, CV. Right here, you can see other documents you need. Um, we have already stated that the documents, but just in case there's a change, you can also take a look at this page right here to see the documents you need to submit. And down here, you can see application location. It says apply directly to the chosen study program. So that is it. You apply directly to the course that you have chosen. So what is the application selection procedure? So this is how it works. 
you send your complete application directly to the postgraduate course to the university and once you have done that a selection committee will suggest potential candidates for the daad scholarship now the suggested candidates will be contacted by daad to upload their complete application to the daad portal and thereafter the selection process will be finalized and the suggested candidates will be informed accordingly so that that is the step all that is needed from your side is just to submit your application documents to the university and um, if you are selected you are also going to have to do an interview in most cases so this means that after submitting your documents to the university make sure to keep the um, the copies of those documents so that if you are selected you still have those documents to upload to the dad portal so how do you get started the first thing you want to do is go over to the overview where you have the pdf that contains all the eligible courses so i'm going to go into the eligible courses right now and here you want to select a course that you are interested in or um, a course that is in your study area to give you an example i'm going to come down right here and use the uh, masters in marine biology so if you're interested in this course we're going to click on the marine biology msc so before you do that check the deadline for this course so this is um, 15th of um, 15th of October 2024. That is the deadline to apply to this particular program. So maybe application will open around August. So I just make sure to apply before the deadline. So but for now, you have a lot of time to prepare your documents. So I'm just going to click on the course and it takes me to the official website of this course. This course is at the University of Bremen and you can see the course right here. What you have to do is to read through the course and you are looking for application procedure so at the top right here you can see application and admission and you just have to click on that and thereafter you can see right here um, application regular application without scholarship we are not interested in this then there's um, application including DAD scholarship so you can see right here this is what we are interested in so you want to make sure to read through and see the, the the information from the university they are stated here that the deadline for application is 15th of october one year prior to the intended start of the study program so this is what i'm interested in i'm going to click on this application including dad scholarship and you can see more information about this right on this page but as you know this is quite early so if you come to the right hand side you can see the deadline and also you can see right here that the online application portal will open 1st of August. So the application is not open. When the application is open, you are going to find a link to go to the application portal to submit your documents. Basically, what you want to do is just to submit your documents. And the documents can be collected in different ways. Some university would want you to send the documents to them via mail. This means that you have to send the hard copies, the photocopies of your documents to the university in Germany. Some universities will just ask you to um, send the documents via email. So you just have to upload your documents to your email and send to the university. Why other universities like this one um, will collect the documents via the application portal. So that is all you need to do. Upload the documents whichever way you want to get the documents to the university. Get those documents to the university and you are good to go. So that is basically how to apply to the DAD EPUS scholarship. And right now, I'm going to give you some tips that will help you to um, stand out or give you a better chance to win the scholarship. Because I won this scholarship back in 2020 and um, it's been a really good ride and it has really changed my life for better. The first thing you need to do is to make sure you meet the eligibility criteria. Once you've met all the eligibility criteria, then the next thing you want to do is to focus on your letter of motivation as well as um, your reference letters because these are the two ways you can stand out from every other person who meets the eligibility criteria right now let me give you some tips that you can use to improve your letter of motivation the first thing you want to do is to explore the program that you are applying to for example the uh, masters in marine biology i'm just going to go back to the very first page make sure you read through the program you can see right here um, the major the main objectives of isatech so you want to make sure you understand these main objectives 
because you have to include them in your letter of motivation. For example, you can see one of the objectives right here for, the, for this particular program to understand the structure and function of aquatic ecosystems in the tropics. So in your letter of motivation, you must make sure to align your career goals and even your future goals to the objectives of the particular program. This helps you to stand out to the reviewers. So not just the objectives, but also look at the different courses uh, that are taken under this particular program and um, align these courses to your goals and what you want to achieve both, in the, both during the program and in the future. Also, you can draw your motivation from the achievements of the particular program and also the achievements of the alumni. So you can also check out the alumni for the particular program and say, oh, this alumni has, has done this and this. This has motivated me to apply to this particular program. These are kind of um, things that you can do. And these are things that other applicants might not be doing. And this can help you to stand out and win the scholarship. So what you want to do is to go through the website, look at alumni network, and you can also research the, the professors that are taking the particular course and tie your motivation to these professors as well. Just a tip, mentioning familiar names in your letter of motivation to those who are reviewing your letter of motivation brings you closer to the reviewers. And this can just help you to get selected. By the way, I am an alumni and I think I have to find a way to get myself into this picture. Yeah, I think so. So that is a tip to improve your letter of motivation. You can also check out my ebook to get more tips as well as uh, examples. You can see samples of letter of motivation that have won the DART scholarship, a lot of them, and even my personal letter of motivation is also there. You can read it through and this can help you and give you inspiration to craft out your own award-winning letter of motivation. Another important document that you have to focus on, like I said, is your um, letter of reference. Just make sure your referees are not writing generic letter of reference for you because this does not help you in any way. In your letter of reference, you have to explain to those who are going to write it for you. They should be able to give an example of a project or something you have done in a storytelling manner, not just writing generic things like he's a good um, student, he did this but they should be able to give um, an example of a story in a story format of something that you did that really helped you to stand out um, above your peers. Because they cannot just say they consider you to be a, um, an outstanding student. They have to be able to demonstrate why they think you are an outstanding student. So that is a, a mistake most um, um, referees make. Um, they have to be able to explain whatever they are saying in an example format. They have to give an example. For example, if you were the president of your faculty and they should be able to explain your achievement as well in the reference letter. And one final tip is that you should always trust in God to help you succeed. Prayer is important and I think praying for you to get a fully funded scholarship um, is not a waste of time. So trust in God and I believe this is a very important factor. So guys, that will be it for this video. This is the homeland of international opportunities. Do not forget to like and subscribe and also share this video to your friends and family. I will see you in my next video.